actually, I mean, it's a big pleasure to be in the kitchen in here to talk to you. So I just have a presentation. I think you will enjoy it. So people ask, you know, what makes a good leader? So I'm not going to give you a cliche answer to what makes a leader, uh, because I'm not a leader at the end. But I will try to picture you a leader that I know for long years, I mean, for more than 12 years. It's a leader who changed my life and who changed the lives of the other people. And actually, it's a woman, uh, apart from my mother. Uh, so it's kind of a 10-minute talk to summarize all this story that I had with her for the last 12 years and maybe more. But, you know, being the, ma the only male speaker on a theme on uh, women empowerment, I would really want to dedicate this speech to all the ladies that we are working with to you and especially to the lady who changed my life at the end. So, uh, okay, some say leaders are born, so others believe that they are shaped by time and by their experience. But what I learned is this, a leader is the one who thinks out of the box. So even questions the box itself. So that's why most of the people, they think that leaders are a bit crazy. Uh, but at the end, they are full of knowledge, they are full of inspiration, and the others, they are inspired by the leaders. It's not because you know, they travel the whole world. It's because what they say and what they do is kind of inspirational. And as you know, that the leaders, they fail, they fall, but you know, they lift themselves up from their experience, and they become more stronger, even more charismatic. So it doesn't, okay, th this is my niece. She is called Bade. Actually, in the video, normally, she used to have this barrels uh, taking care of it. She's only 15 months, and she's only 75 centimeters. But she doesn't have a box in her mind, definitely. But she doesn't have a clue on what she's doing when she was carrying all these boxes. But uh, she just does it, because she just wants to make it. And she makes herself happy. She makes other people happy. So OK, maybe I should pass this guy. OK, so what, 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 what a leader needs is she needs or he needs a first follower. Actually, the first follower is very important for the success of the leader because the first follower should be as crazy and as brave as the leader is. Then the first follower embraces the, the, the leader embraces the first follower uh, because it's not anymore he or she. They are we. And for the others, they are they. Then, then comes the second follower. Actually, the arrival of the second follower is very important because it proves that the leader has done well and the first follower has done well as well. And they just start a movement. The leader never leaves the stage and the first follower never leaves the stage, but it's a movement. Now, it's not one, it's not two, it's three. And what does three mean? It means crowd. Crowd means public because people, they see public and they try to get in. And then comes, you know, one is lonely, two is a company, three is a crowd. And then you start to have two more people, and then you start to have three more people and five more people. It gets quicker for other people to join in because there is no more any risk to get inside. Even there are more risks to, get to, to stay out of, uh, outside. So they all try to get, create a movement. Some, some, sometimes tens of people, they join them, sometimes thousands of them, and sometimes even millions of the people. This is actually what we have, with, we have done with our, my project, Chop Madam, the Garbage Ladies of Turkey. So I was not brave enough to be, to be a leader, so I decided to be the first follower, and I decided to follow a woman who was a leader. So I'm going to introduce you the leader. So she is my dear, dear, dear business partner. She has been a friend of mine for, last, for the last 12 years and even more. Uh, and now she is living in Ayvalık in this very small village in Turkey on the Aegean Sea, where the Turkish culture meets with the Greek culture and where the fish meets with olive. So like almost the whole Turkish geography, women, they don't have the chance to participate into the economy because the women, they have to take care of their kids, they have to take care of the elderly, and the families, they are very traditional. So actually, those women, they represent the three-fourth of the women employment, I mean, the three-fourth of the women uh, in Turkey. Right now, the employment rate in Turkey for women is 24%, which means that only one out of four ladies in Turkey, they could have a chance to work. So the others, they have to stay at home, and they have to do nothing. And so they are not economically powerful, and which, which means that they are not socially powerful as well. Actually, this was the question that stuck us, and this was the way how we started to see the box, and we started to see out of the box, and how to empower ladies, how to empower women locally in a way that it's sustainable. So this is our idea. It's garbage ladies. It's a play on words in Turkish, and it's an experimental local development project that has started on August 2008. It's a model to empower local women economically than socially, women who have never earned a salary in their lifetimes, in a way that's creative, in a way that is fun, and making usable and sellable out of uh, items out of trash, which is actually costless. 
So I could say that Chop Madam is a model. It's a model without a business plan because we are not business people. We are not business backgrounded people, so we don't have a business plan. Chop Madam, it's a model. It's experimental. It's local, but most importantly, it's fun and it's very creative. It's a solution. It's not a holistic solution. We don't find, we don't kind of so uh, find a solution to the whole unemployment problem in Turkey. But it is just a sort, a very small part of the solution to empower women locally, to give them a voice, to give them an opportunity to work and to earn their own money, then to increase their self-esteem and then their status in the society. And while doing that, to increase the environmental awareness, to bring to the forefront concepts like waste, waste management, reuse, recycle, etc., for our ladies, for our industries, and for our community. And to increase people's responsibility to each other and to the nature. And Chop Madam is a moment lately. It's a moment with many followers. It's the locals, the NGOs, big companies, small companies, donors, donations, venture capitalists, venture philanthropists, small industries, universities, NGOs, customers, and the media, which is very important. So during the last couple of years, Chop Modern was called as a green business. It was called as a model for inclusive markets. It was called as a social enterprise. We have received awards in Turkey and outside of Turkey. We got into books, into academic articles in this Turkey and in the States. We have been recognized by many, several sources as being a leading social enterprise in Turkey. We had visitors, we had customers, media people. We had the local governors coming to visit us and the curious people visit us in our workshops from Turkey and outside of Turkey. But all in all, even though we don't have a business plan yet, uh, even though we don't have a business background, so Chop Madam is a full business established under Turkish law, unfortunately. So uh, I want actually here, I will just try to come up with this ecosystem, which are the, what, what makes the Chop Madam the garbage ladies ecosystem in Turkey. I'm not going to mention you any names because we don't have the names. We don't need the names. It's, they can be poor, rich, they can be small or big, etc. But they are all the same. They are all equal because they all have and they all had a role to play in this huge ecosystem. So we have the leader, of course. And then we have the first follower, which are the crazy and the brave ones. So, and actually the first support comes from their families, which are very, very important. And of course from their friends, uh, and some of them they are around. And uh, we have Elam and Neshe, who were our first instructors who started this whole to teach, who started to teach the ladies how to do bags out of garbage. And they have spent hours with them. And this connects us to our ladies, which are actually in Ayvalık in Turkey, in Diyarbakır in Turkey, and Kisinau in Moldova right now, which are more than 500 women that we have reached in these three workshops at the moment. They are all these garbage ladies that we are there, all having from diff they are from different backgrounds, they are from different stories, different realities, different geographies. But at the end of the day, they are all colleagues, they are all co-workers, a title that they have never received before. And you know, right now they are taking advantage of being colleagues all together. And of course we do have the sponsors. We do have the trash donors. These are multinational big companies, small companies, and even some individuals who collect their trash at their homes or in their offices and who send us to our workshops so that we can make bags and products out of it. So we have all these people coming in. And then very importantly, actually as you were saying, we have the locals. It should be local. The local people, they should support it. It should be the kids. It should be the, I don't know, the local government. Even the, our male laborers who are used to see women at home with their home. And right now they are working with them at next door. So, and of course we have the shops, lastly, who sells our products and which creates our customers. I mean, they change from the big key, big chain stores to very designer stuff, boutiques, etc. But we kind of try to uh, reach our customers. Let, last but not, not the least, we have the cats. Uh, because we just have the cats, so I don't know. And of course we do have trash, and tons of trash that fills our workshops. So, what makes all this? I mean, it's, it's, it seems to be a very kind of complicated uh, ecosystem, but actually it is not. I mean, if these two financial wizards, uh, me and my business partner, could manage it, so everyone can do it. Uh, so what makes easy for all these different actors to work, to work all together? These are kind of the principles that doesn't yield out and they are just the same. Like we have dedication, we have trust, passion, ambition, ability to listen, and of course being a bit crazy. 
So have you seen anything which relates to the business, any business model, any business plan, supply demand curve, six sigmas, five Ps, da da da, you know, all these numbers, et cetera? Actually, we don't have it. I mean, it is, I mean, there, there is this very good saying from Stuart Hart, who is an economist, who says that it is the business model stupid. So, I mean, we are, this is the way how we are kind of trying to do business. So here is a quote, late, lastly, I really like it. Some people watch it happen, some people say what happened, some people ask did something happen, and some people didn't even notice that, notice that something has <laughs> happened. But some people, they just make it happen. So this is actually what Tara did. Uh, and, okay, this is actually what Tara did, my business partner, it's her name. This is actually what I did, this is actually what we did. And I believe that I was not a leader enough, uh, so I decided to be the first follower. And she, my business partner, believed that it was what she was doing, so she just found a follower for herself. And I really want to use this opportunity to thank all the people, or our families, our friends, our sponsors, or ladies, or my business partner, and everyone, and the organizer of this event, to use this opportunity to thank you all. Thanks. Uh, <laughs>